So my journey was a little bit different. So I actually moved to the US my junior year. Um, so I only did my junior and senior year at JC. So I moved here from Jamaica. Uh, so big change. Uh, winter was definitely rough the first time, but I enjoyed it. Uh, there was so much to do at JC, so it helped me transition a lot better than I thought it would be. My mom's always been living here, so she's lived here for the last 20 plus years, uh, 24 years, I want to say. Um, so I lived with my dad back in Jamaica. So we had already decided that when it was time to go to college and everything, I want to move here to live with my mom. So in order to get caught up with ACTs, SATs, which we don't usually do in Jamaica, I decided to come um, towards the end of high school so I could do that. I graduated from JC back in 2017. Uh, okay, birds. I'm currently a PhD student here at Missouri City in Rolla, and I received my undergraduate degree in engineering management and my PhD degree in arts and systems engineering. I kind of described it like a big puzzle. Um, a lot of times when you have a problem, it's like a puzzle, and when you just throw it out of the box, so it's multiple pieces all over the place, and you need to strategize how you're going to start it. So most people, what they do, they start from the outside of the puzzle, the outside corners, and work their way in. So the systems engineer, you're that person that's saying, okay, this is the problem, and here are the pieces. How do we fit it together so that we can finish this puzzle? For me, going to JC was nice because it was a diverse population. Like, so I was around, you know, people that looked like me, people that didn't look like me, and you know, so I think that prepared me for moving here. Probably a little bit more difficult for um, some of my friends that went to school in St. Louis, at predominantly black high schools, where they're not used to being the only black person in a class, or you know, being the only or the first. And I think that's what comes with being a black female in engineering. You're you're going to be the first, or you're going to be the only quite a bit and it's just kind of being comfortable with navigating that i know from my first internship uh i was on a construction site again very male dom dominated i was in the middle of kansas <laughs> so i was in rural kansas on the construction site and there's probably two black people out of 150 people there and the other one was a, a laborer that was working there and I remember at first coming in as an engineer, you kind of like, you're, there's going to be some skepticism, like, do you even know what you're doing? Or, you know, one of the big things I'd say is that, you know, the first week, the guys out there were just they're skeptical of me, which I wasn't surprised at. You know, they're like, well, we've been doing this for 20 years. Like, you can't tell us what to do. You know, and that's usually the attitude with a lot of older people that have been in the industry for a while. But by the end of the summer, we were all friends. We were all joking, you know, so it's just giving it time sometimes for people to warm up to you uh people aren't used to this image of an engineer you know usually when people say engineer they think white male you know so i'd say it's just give it time expect that there's going to be some skepticism at first and just learning to navigate those uncomfortable situations is probably been the, the best thing for me like being comfortable with being the only person in my class or being the first person. My best advice for somebody, for another, you know, black person or black female, especially coming into engineering, is that you're probably not going to be uh, a lot of you. <laughs> so stick to the, you know, that's important to you. Stick to the people that you know you know. But most importantly, like diversify. Like your friend groups just don't have to look like you. Um, you just have to find people that understand you and understand that there's differences, and that's the main thing. Why I picked my dissertation topic largely had to do with my background. Growing up in Jamaica, we had storms, hurricanes. Um, I've been through countless hurricanes and storms in the 16 years that I was there. So um, just seeing the damage that is done and you know how long it takes for us to recover and to respond and seeing that there isn't adequate infrastructure in place to deal with that, um, it really sparked my interest in, okay, how can we find some realistic solutions to this? Um, obviously, over the last couple of years, global warming has become a topic that is spoken about a lot more. People are starting to see the effects of climate change a lot more and seeing that it's a real thing. And um, one thing that stood out to me is that more developed countries like the United States or you know, Sweden, Australia, uh, Switzerland, they have the resources to adequately prepare the country for certain natural disasters or even if you're not prepared, they can respond to it pretty quickly uh, because there's adequate funding, infrastructure is solid, so they have a pretty resilient system already in place to combat that. But when you think about 
uh, smaller islands like Jamaica or smaller developing countries that don't have the resources, um, don't even have infrastructure for a regular good day, quote unquote, where there isn't a storm, where there isn't a disaster going on. It's, it's very difficult to come to these countries and say, hey, uh, these natural disasters are going to become more frequent and unpredictable. We don't know when, we don't know how bad, but we should probably fix that, you know? It's hard to tell a country that's already struggling to say you should put money on something that you don't know exactly when it's going to happen or how bad it's going to be. So my research essentially focuses on how can we create a minimum standard for these countries of saying, okay, you need to have at least this and this is your likelihood of getting this storm. So again, it's a systematic approach. Um, there's going to be transportation infrastructure that you need, such as roads, you know, energy grid is something that you're going to need to look at. Healthcare is also something, your first responders. Um, so it's just my, my research essentially zones in on saying how can we create a standard for these countries, but a realistic approach, because just understanding that they simply don't have the resources to probably do the best thing that a United States could possibly do but you still want them to have enough to where they aren't getting completely, you know, they aren't getting completely destroyed by a storm every time. So it's interesting because it takes a different approach. You kind of have to take your mindset out of a US mindset because there's so much we take for granted here as far as things that are just in place, but they aren't, they don't exist in other places. So the biggest challenge in, and advantage for me is that I grew up there and I've seen it but it's also challenging because I've been here for so long and I'm used to certain things being here as well. It's kind of putting yourself in their shoes and seeing, you know, this might make sense here, but this doesn't make sense there. It's important as you go through life to not forget, you know, what other people are going through. It's nice when you experience luxuries and, you know, life is better for you. You tend to forget that other people are struggling. And I always want to keep that on the forefront of my mind and help people as much as I can.